record. So anyway, we will start on Fridays, Sermon on the Mount with lesson one. Lesson one is, by the way, on Sermon on the Mount is um, an overview of a few chapters of um, Matthew. So don't work too hard on them, okay? Just kind of get an overview feel of what that's saying. Don't go into deep study, okay? Did okay, I lose I'm everybody? Sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. hear some okays. Okay, come on. Oh, I didn't put a prayer in here. <laughs> well, I, I never mind. I got the lesson done, okay? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together that we've had to study Genesis. And why you put the study on um, Jacob and Esau is still amazing to me. They were messed up people. Oh, kind of like we are, huh? But Lord, we thank you for your word. We ask you that you bless this time that we have together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I won't push you too hard on this one for right now, but I'll just go through the review real quick. Genesis 24, Rebecca came from Abraham's family to be Isaac's wife. Mm -hmm. 25, we studied that Jacob and Esau were born to Isaac. Mm -hmm. Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. I mean, just right off the bat, right? Mm -hmm. Genesis 26, God established his oath, his covenant with Isaac, and appeared to Isaac. Genesis 27, Jacob deceived Isaac and took Esau's blessing, and Esau planned to kill him. Remember that, too. I don't think we covered that, but, you know, Esau was saying, as soon as my dad's dead, I'm going to go get him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jacob went to his mother's rel relatives for a wife. In Genesis 28, he went to Padam Aram, I guess, Padan Aram. Mm -hmm. Jacob had the latter dream, God's promise, Genesis 29. He's in Haram. Jacob married Leah and Rachel and had 12 sons and a daughter born, actually 11 by this time. And Genesis 30, Jacob becomes prosperous. And then in 31, we're going to see that Lord took him to, told him to return to Can Canaan. Levin caught up with them, and they made a covenant, and that's called a mitzvah, which we studied this week. So now your turn to dig into it. In Genesis 31 through 43 through 55, what are these verses about? What did you learn in these verses? About the, the covenant that they made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was that covenant? That he needed to take care of his daughters and not marry any other. Yeah, wasn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. What else did they do? I thought it was interesting that that earlier Jacob had told them, you know, to leave all their idols and come. And yet Rachel still took hers and hid it. And I wondered if she was maybe relying on God to give her sons, you know, I don't know. Okay. Part of the thing about the mitzvah was God would be a witness if Jacob mistreated Laban's daughters or took otherwise. Mm -hmm. And that they wouldn't pass the heat to do another one's harm. It was kind of boundary was set, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You stay on this side of it, and I'll stay on that side, and we'll be hokey dokey, right? Yep. What did J Jacob swear? By the fear of his father Isaac. Yes. And he he offered a sacrifice, didn't he? Mm-hmm. And this is part of covenant. If you haven't taken covenant before, I urge you to find someone who's leading it. Or you can go to my um, uh, YouTube. I've got my recordings for the class that you're more than welcome to watch at your own leisure. Um, but eating a meal was part of covenant. Do you all remember that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then what did Leban do? 
Um, Get up and left. He kids his daughters. And bless them. Mm -hmm. And bless them, yeah. But God kept his promise to Jacob. You guys need to get more involved here. Okay. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Wake up. Do you not have your coffee yet? Well, actually, lesson four starts in chapter 32. I think that's why we're thrown off. Mm -hmm. Well, in verses one through five, that's where we have the angels. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to angels. Can you handle that? Yes. The angels. Okay. <laughs> angels, yeah. So what happened here? Well, he's getting ready to meet Esau. So he's breaking his camp up into groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you find it interesting how he broke them up? Yes. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> but at first he calls it God. This is God's camp. God's camp. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. And you looked up the word, didn't you? Did anybody look that up? Was that part of the homework? I can't no. remember. No. No? Well, <laughs> it means two camps or two companies. All right. So he named the place. This is God's camp. But he named it, which means there was two camps there. It was his camp and then his and God's camp. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then he divided his camp into two camps. You see the play on words that they were doing? Mm -hmm. yeah. Malak is the word, the Hebrew word for angels, which means messengers. I hope you all know that. It reminds me of 2 Kings and 6, where Elijah's servant's eyes were opened to see angels surrounding them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you all remember that story? Yes. 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 That was, that's a cool story, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then Jacob sent messengers to his brother Esau in Seir in Edom. What, did, what was the message that he sent? And notice that he sent messengers, which is what angels are. Mm -hmm. It's another play on words. What did he, when, what was the message? I got a He nap. was going to give them gifts, some, some yeah. mm -hmm. and also meet, meet up later with him. So, it wasn't like a fearful, he wasn't showing him that he's afraid. He's showing them he wants to be friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, him gifts. and there's kind of that request where it says, um, you know, in verse five, I want to find favor with you. You know, there's mm -hmm. this, he's putting out that he doesn't want animosity, that he would like to be able to meet with favor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Also, he said he would be his servant rather, you know, that, yeah. that the blessing was that um, um, Esau was supposed to be a servant to Jacob. But now Jacob is telling his messengers to tell Esau yeah. that Jacob is the servant and yeah. call him Lord. So he said, call him Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was showing a lot of humility. Yeah, he was coming yeah. to him being very humble. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Mary. Okay. We need to do that when we have um, international problems, I think. Oh, that's a thought, <laughs> isn't it? Well, and he began to pray very specifically to God. Yeah. You know, uh, he starts out with the, you know, the I am unworthy of your loving kindness. Help me to find favor with my brother. He's not, he's fearful. He's preparing all that he can do, but he's really depending on God to also prepare the way. Absolutely. And we need to do that more when we're in difficult situations. Do everything we can, but recognize God's the one in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the messenger and the messengers came back saying, well, he's got 400 men with him. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that'll make you shake in your shoes yeah <laughs> well and remember that he was afraid because he's he bought esau's birthright and yep. took his blessing by deception mm -hmm. and he knew that esau planned to kill him yes but he had been gone for 20 years y'all yes mm -hmm. 20 years 20 years 
But how many of us in our own life know of friends and families that say, well, I haven't spoken to my brother in 20 years or 30 years, or I haven't talked to my mother. And, you know, people hold grudges mm. and this could, have been <laughs> a, this could have turned out terribly. Mm -hmm. I mean, what Jacob did was no little thing. Mm -hmm. right. And Esau, it could have turned out just totally different. It could mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Anything else from that? He was just very humble. <laughs> the um, the power of forgiveness or the importance. Of it is, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it I also. Wonder, go ahead. I wonder. Um, because late Laban, late was it late Laban, mm -hmm. um, deceived him. Was that the reason that he became so humble? Maybe he saw his own faults and the way he treated his brother. Now this is just coming off the top of my head, but mm -hmm. I was just thinking how he changed from that deceiver to become so humble with his brother. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he had 20 years of being deceived. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah well, he kind of got a dose of it. Wanted to get a dose of his own medicine. medicine yeah. 20 years. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember that, you know, he says, you know, for 20 years I put up with your stuff. You know, you've, mm -hmm. you've cheated me out of my wages 10 times or something like that. You know? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. But he was asking, his prayer was for deliverance, wasn't it? Yes. Deliver me from this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he reminded God that what his God had promise. promised him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So in 13 to 21, he um, sent a gift for Esau. Verse 20 said he wanted to appease Esau for acceptance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So one of the events as we go on, because this was kind of a long chapter, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm wrestling with, yeah, go ahead. Well, he wrestles with a man that I guess is God, right? And, um, mm -hmm. and uh, did God changes his name to Israel because he's a... Uh, I, I forget the name. Yeah. He, 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 well, he did not prevail against him. Mm -hmm. But he did cause him to, to limp from the, his hip. Yes. You know, I've never understood that, that verse where it says, um, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. How did he prevail with God? Yeah. Anybody? I think partly is he didn't quit. He wouldn't mm. give up, even though he could not win against mm -hmm. God. He right. didn't quit. Mm -hmm. He hung to him mm. and wouldn't let him go. Yeah, he would not let him go. Mm -hmm. I, I like I, that. I, 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 it it I, wasn't I, a matter of winning or losing because he couldn't win. Yeah. Right. He just didn't let go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. So That's was this an angel of God or was this God himself? Or do we know? Verse 30 says it was God. God. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. My understanding, it was Jesus in a pre, okay. pre thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good life lesson there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let go. Yeah. Don't let go. Who are you going to hang on to, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's true. And, and I've really struggled during this lesson. I've, I've kind of struggled with that verse because you know how the scripture says, come boldly before the throne, ask anything and I will give it to you. Promises, promises, promises that we believe and we hold on to. But yet, we always have to add that thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And this mm -hmm. week, losing friends, I've struggled with that. Mm -hmm. But as I read this, I thought, it doesn't matter what happens. You hang on to God because he can do no evil. He can do no wrong. He will not harm us. And sometimes just truth 
the knowledge of the truth is what you have to hold on to. And I, for me this week, this was such a good lesson. He mm. couldn't win, good. but he clung. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard to face it. We're still in a fallen world. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, you can just watch the news and you just, ah, you know, go crazy with it. Mm -hmm. um, I almost think sometimes we have way too much information. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I read that, um, that Jacob had struggled with um, whoever at night um, until the sun came up and it probably was God because no one could look at God um, in the light. So I don't know if that's, <laughs> I just read that. I, thought oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Well, now I don't know about that because in verse 30, it says, I have seen God face to face, face, to face. yet my life has been preserved. Mm -hmm. Well, Jacob was the heir through which the Messiah someday would come also. That's right. Mm -hmm. From his loins. Right. But his so life was preserved. Yeah, he saw God face to face. Mm -hmm. But his life was preserved. And he named that place Peniel. Peniel. Mm -hmm. Which means mm -hmm. facing God. Mm -hmm. And God did bless him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. He had to. Um, they say, I heard somewhere in the in the jewish tradition that jacob walked the rest of his life with that lamp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was god's reminder to him. yeah mm -hmm. kind of like my neck when i broke my neck it reminds me every day mm -hmm. um, that sign? well it's the, it equates in the new testament to paul's thorn in the flesh exactly mm -hmm. he never got rid of that yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah but hadn't you been wrestling with God all of his life? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think he, it's interesting in verse 29 that, that Jacob asks God, he says, please tell me your name. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. God doesn't answer him. He says, why, why do you ask my name? And then he blessed him. Yeah. Mm. So how would you apply this to your life? We've kind of talked about it. Yeah, well, I guess the application be to hold on, hang on to the truth. The truth is God. So we need to, no matter the circumstances, mm -hmm. we have to rely and trust God that he's going to bring us through. Mm. Mm. And he wanted to know about God. That's why he's asking, what is your name? That's why he was blessed. And yet God didn't give him his name. So it's not important that we know all that God knows. Mm -hmm. It is important that we trust what uh -huh. God knows. Yeah. You know, it's also interesting that. Um, okay, I forgot my my thoughts. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who does that. <laughs> it was really good. Man. Yeah, I, I know. Really I'm sure it was. <laughs> oh, it'll come back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know that feeling too well. <laughs> what would you have for a chapter theme for this chapter? 33. Jacob wrestled with God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And Israel, that's important to know. And here's the map. So this is just my, this is how I do my maps, you know. I So here, over here, there's God's camp. All right. And there's, there's Mitzvah. This is all real close together. There's Penel. Here's Shechem, which is chapter 34. Here's oh, Bethel. Yeah. Okay. Down here where it says um, Edom, it says Seir, S-E-I-R, that's where Esau came and went from, right? Right. Just so you know, these maps are real, real helpful, aren't they, Kay? Mm -hmm. is, is she still here? I appreciate them because I wouldn't bother, and thank you, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah, it's interesting to say, I mean, this is a real tiny little country, you know? Mm-hmm. 
So we go on to chapter 33. What happened in this chapter? Well, well they saw Esau it. coming. Yeah. Here come, okay. Here yeah. comes Esau. Mm -hmm. It's getting tense now. He's separated his family. He's put who in front? <laughs> Who's the, the first concubines. ones that are going to get? Yeah, they oh, right. The concubines. The, yeah. yeah, the women. Well, yeah, you know, and the kids, and the kids. But it's but <laughs> it, it was it was like Ray said, the concubines. Okay. Yep, the concubines. Uh -huh. All right. Then then who? Leah. Leah. Leah and his children, and then Rachel and Joseph. Uh -huh. and, and Benjamin were last. Yeah, no, I guess still. Yeah, Benjamin wasn't born yet, but ben Benjamin wasn't there yet. Yeah. <laughs> but Jacob went ahead of them, verse three. Yeah, he did go ahead. I mean, he did. You know, he went up. in front of them. Yeah, <laughs> he wasn't hiding behind them. <laughs> the skirts. Yeah. <laughs> so Esau meets Jacob, and what happens? I mm. love the thing. Esau was... ran. Esau yes. ran. Yes. And embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him. They wept. It was joyful and emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And remember, too, they were twins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. twins always have a connection. Theirs had never served them well in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and, and he called him Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes, he called him and Esau's servant. Thus denying his authority over right. Esau. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was submitting to a man. Mm -hmm. So he just got done submitting to God. Mm -hmm. And his lesson was he had to also submit to his brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a lesson learned, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that teaches us that it doesn't matter who is ahead, who is in, in charge. We have to submit to one another. Mm -hmm. in there love you go. and in kindness because yeah. mm -hmm. he had striven all of his life with God and with his brother mm -hmm. all of his life mm -hmm. remember it started from the get go even in Rebecca's womb they struggled mm -hmm. Yeah, pulling his leg <laughs> <laughs> so what had God done how was God working in all this he changed he just, Jesus' mind he did, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Repeat that. I had to close the door. What did you say? He <laughs> changed Esau's mind. He changed Esau's yeah. mind. Yeah. Good. Hey, are oh, you all able to yeah. hear music in my background? What? Can play piano? Yeah, I can mute if you can hear it. I, it's not bothersome to me. Okay. I can't hear it. You know, I think more so than just changing their mind he changed their heart their heart mm -hmm. after 20 years yeah just mm -hmm. goes to show you the power of prayer huh mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah because you know he could have changed esau's mind or he could have listened to jacob's prayer mm -hmm. or maybe it was both but isn't it, it interesting we say it's after 20 years we want things done so quickly yes, we yeah do. <laughs> you know why couldn't we have had this you know, 20 years ago, year. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. but you know, God has a timing mm -hmm. and, and because he sees past, present and future, um, he did this at exactly the right time. Yeah. 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 And there was probably a lot more things going on that we don't even know about. Right. But right. we see that not only, uh, Jacob mm -hmm. prosper, but Esau, Esau prosper. Mm -hmm. He also. did. He did, didn't he? He did yes. quite well. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I guess that took off of the <laughs> well, you, you know, know the part. Because Abraham was the blessing. It was all his children. And the Bible, and that's what God said. Everybody, all your children through you will be blessed. So even though and Ishmael was blessed. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. He had those 12 sons too, 12 kings. Mm -hmm. It became 12 nations. Of course, mm -hmm. they all fought against Israel and still are, but you know. Mm -hmm. So Esau went back to Seir. 
and uh, also um jacob saw um god's face in esau's face right i mean which is kind of like christ a little bit coming right i mean you, in a, you see the god's face in a man how, how, where'd you get that from man yeah where is that at? <laughs> um number verse 10 please i have now found favor in your sight then receive my present from my hand inasmuch as i have seen your face as though i had seen the face of god uh, oh. as though not not exactly but as though yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah as he saw that's saying that like just like i saw god's okay. face earlier mm -hmm. yeah he's not saying he saw god's face and he saw right. esau mm -hmm. would no he, god wasn't very fond of esau if you remember correctly mm-hmm so Jacob means deceiver or supplanter. Israel, do you know that it means he who strives with God? God. Uh -huh. yeah. Isn't that interesting? Uh -huh. yeah. Jacob built a house for himself and made booths for his livestock, thus staying at Succoth Succoth for a while. Okay. Where is Succoth? Where is that puppy? I'm not seeing it on the map. Does anybody? Oh, there it is. It, it's yeah. right above. It's it right there. Yeah, Shechem. No, no, that's Shechem over here. Here's Sukuth. Yeah. Okay, okay just ar around the corner from the place where he saw God. Peniel. He knew that his citizenship was in heaven, not here on earth, and that we should live like it. Verses 18 through 20. What did you learn in 18 through 20? He bought some land there and made some. Oh, mm -hmm. that's where he goes to Shechem. Yeah. That's when he goes to Shechem, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He yes. goes to Shechem and settles there. Yeah. He gets in trouble. <laughs> well, he always gets in trouble, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> El Elohim, Israel, it means God, the God of Israel. Mm. He referred to God as God of the Abraham and Isaac, but here he called God the God of Israel instead of Jacob. So he's accepting mm. his name change. And yeah. mm -hmm. If God, remember at Bethel, what did Jacob say to him? If you will do this for me, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? I will it's promise. It's a bargain. Mm -hmm. I'll come back and give you a chance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it always amuses me that, that you bargain with God. That's kind of dumb, in my opinion. <laughs> Making I, a deal. Well, don't we all do that? Yeah, yeah. but I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> But it was pretty humble, didn't he? Just say, "If you give me food and clothing, I can come. Let me come back to help me come back to my family or land or something." I mean, you know, he wasn't asking for a lot. I don't think. Oh, well, he's very, <laughs> he's very blessed that that's exactly what God wanted, you yeah. know, to preserve him and to bring him back to the land. Um, mm -hmm. I always, I mean, that's why, isn't that why we pray for God's glory and in Jesus' name? So if what we're praying for is not within God's preordained will, that we don't get it. The saying. <laughs> well, I mean, and sometimes we as humans are fragile and we need proof. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just yeah. like Gideon and the fleece. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, but God didn't think much of that method he used it but it's not a it's not a real effective method for dealing with god no he just it, wants us to believe it's not a recommended method <laughs> i don't know it saved my butt several times <laughs> I, I, just, I, I mean i said god if this is what you want to do you need to either open the door wide open or slam it shut okay. when you oh, ask him a, i've heard it bargain. that's not a bargain I, I've heard it said that the Gideon, that Gideon was was basically a, a baby. Uh, it was an immature type way of dealing with God. That as we mature in God, mm -hmm. as we know Him better, yeah, that's that's, that's why I say not the best way to do you it. need to. 
Yeah, I know it's not, but as we grow, sometimes we just yeah. need that. When you're a child, it, this is it, the way you do it. It's the way you do it. It's the way yeah. you do it. Yeah. So I, I don't say it's a bad thing because Abraham says, now, wait a minute. If we got down to 20 people, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, and he got it down to 10, you know, mm. from 50, you mm. know. And, oh, and here's something else to think about. One of my, I, God has given me a number of gifts, hospitality, friendship, things like that. I, I do not have the gift of discernment easily in that I trust everybody. I love everybody. I want to find you good. do, don't you? And then you have me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but ahead, there are times when I pray, I'm like, God, you made me this way. And the deficits that I have or what I see as my weaknesses, I need to know. So if this thing, is, if this person is not good or whatever, I need something that absolutely shows me. And more than once, God has saved me from something because I recognize my, my nature is to just love and trust. Uh -huh. And you would think I would learn a lesson, but I'm always afraid of becoming hard mm -hmm. and, and not being where I need to be for people. <coughs> I think it's the attitude of the heart when you barter or when you ask for a fleece. I think it has to be why you're asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we need to consider um, God and how gracious he is he, because it shows this lesson shows that he will meet us wherever we are. Where we are. Yes. Good and point, Ariel. You know, we are so loved by God that way. Yes. Yeah. You know, you pointed out that a child would bargain that way. And yet Jesus recommends that we be childlike. So he does, doesn't he? <laughs> that's the, maybe the attitude is the childlike innocence of it. You mm -hmm. know, that's mm -hmm. what we need to be looking at is it's not the bargain. It's like she said, the a attitude of the heart that mm -hmm. we come as a child. Depends. I agree with that, but I also think that we grow in faith. Yes, yes. We do. And so if our faith is where we need to see something in order to act, then like someone said, he will meet us there. But we shouldn't stay in that place because as we go through life, we go from glory to glory we should be able to walk in faith that when God says it, we believe it. Yeah. And, and that takes, that takes maturity, it but does. that's where we should be going to. Cause we all have things to learn, don't we? Mm -hmm. All right. Who was it who told me about um, that movie that was playing? It was about Diana. Who was it? Was it you, Evelyn? Nope. I'll have who is this that. picture of? Who, who are these women? They're in a movie. Um, gosh, uh, the Scarlet Rope, or what? What's oh, it called? Uh, wasn't that Londa that was telling us about that? Was it Londa? Yeah. yeah. Um. What was it? What was the name of that movie? Uh, she just texted it to me the other day. Let me see if I can. Okay, I found it. Um, no, these are long. She makes really long ones. She is. The, the red tent. Thank the you. The red tent, yes. Yeah, the red tent. It's a story about Diane. It's pretty good as far as movies go, you know. Where do you Diane? Find huh? Where would you find it? Oh, you, red box. I mean. We found it on the. Was it you, Catherine? Yeah. Was it you? No, it was Londa. Um, okay. It was, it said it was on Prime and cost $5.99. Oh, okay. okay. So it wasn't an issue. <laughs> is, this Di is Diana in this picture? Yeah, she's this one on, on the right. Yeah. And I think that's Leia, isn't it? Leia, uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's Leia. Diana was number 11 in the order of Jacob's children, so she probably wasn't very old when they left Padamaram. But in Genesis 34, she was at least a teenager. Quite mm -hmm. a bit of time had passed. So this is where we go into this strange story. In this, you know, they go into Shechem. The prince of the land took Diana by force. 
Mm -hmm. Jacob and Leah's daughter. He was in love with her and he wanted to marry her. Continue the story. Mm -hmm. Anybody? The her brothers, brothers didn't like it much. In fact, they hated it. Amazing. And were extremely angry with, with the prince. Mm -hmm. They called it disgraceful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they devised a plan to get revenge. Amen. Yeah, mm -hmm. they did, didn't they? Mm -hmm. But like fathers, like sons, they deceived in order to get mm -hmm. what they yeah. yeah, they did. Uh -huh. They went and acted just like their daddy, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And their grandfather and their great grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> and even worse, they brought, you know, what religion into it. We'll circumcise them all, which you know we'll make it makes like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes it sound nice, but they're doing that just so when they're in pain, they can kill them. Mm -hmm. And what well, does well, you have to remember too that um, the uh, this king wanted to uh, enter. Well, he wanted to in, have his his group to intermarry with the Israelites and and be like one of them. So I guess the sons say, "Okay, you want to be like one of us." <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's, it's a serious attempt to compromise Israel. It uh, is, isn't it? To, uh, to assimilate them into the culture mm -hmm. rather than, than remaining separate unto God. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. It's obvious that that was a, Satan's attempt to, to destroy Israel mm -hmm. as, a, as a nation and as a country as a possibility. Mm, that's a good point. And to me, the fact that they thought that just being circumcised would make them like the Israelites. That there's a whole lot more to it than that. Mm hmm There really is in there. I read in a in Matthew Henry's commentary, which it might be a little sexist, but he said Dinah, where it says in the first verse, um, she went out to see the daughters of the land. He said, well, maybe. She also went out to see the sons of the land. So maybe, you know, she was kind of getting herself into a little bit of trouble by being that way. I don't know, but it's interesting. It was an interesting yeah, point that, I hadn't seen. Um, yeah, there's a lot of viewpoints on that. Um, you know, she wanted to go check it out. She wanted to see the clothing, you know, and yeah. stuff like that and how other people lived. She was a kid. Mm -hmm. Typical teenager. They want to see what is it there. Once, yeah, once on the other side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. eating the apple <laughs> what they did to the men in Shechem was cruel and violent it was from anger and wrath and they suffered the consequences of their actions later this is when the blessing comes down from Jacob on his yeah, children yeah, yeah. Jacob mm -hmm. remembers what Simeon yeah. and Levi did mm -hmm. doesn't he yes he sure did right and yes, yeah. and Reuben also. <laughs> and yes, Absolutely. The priests, the priests come from the tribe of Levi. Yes, they do. But that's the Moses story, right? Right. <laughs> but they didn't get a good blessing, okay? That's the whole, that's why you went over mm -hmm. to Genesis 49, looked at that. What mm -hmm. would be your theme for Genesis 34? We have two more chapters to do. <laughs> Well, I put that Dinah is uh, Dinah is defiled, and her brothers take revenge. Oh, that's, Very yeah, <laughs> that's to the yeah, that's it. I think. Mm -hmm. All right, Genesis thirty-five. You can look at your chart on day three for the of the lesson on this. What do you learn? How does this um, begin? And uh, uh, God tells Jacob to do something. When is it? To uh, get a vessel and make an altar to God. Yep. Yeah. Now, this is the first time God says, go build me an altar. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So what else did Jacob do? That's when he told the people to get rid of their God, the little God's things. <laughs> the little God things. <laughs> <laughs> They're idols, right, of other gods? Yeah. Yeah. And Jacob hid them under the oak near Shechem. That, that I, I found that interesting. Why he hid them and didn't destroy them? Yeah, yeah that, that was is my thought. Yeah. Why he hide them and not destroy them? 
I don't know. Anybody got any ideas on that? Maybe he was going to use the gold later or something. <laughs> <laughs> It just, it seems a little short-sighted that if you really fully believed in God, you'd destroy him. Whereas, I mean, you, it's like you're keeping a little bit in reserve. I, I found it very just interesting. Case to yeah, go just, in case, it out. just in case yeah. you might need yeah. him again. Yeah. <laughs> I, I felt like you know, when you do something like that, to me, it, it's a sign that that's always a temptation to go back to. Exactly. Yes. Well, and the other thing, if you go on down <laughs> to where um, Deborah died and he buried her under the oak, I wondered, was it the same oak? <laughs> you know? Oh, my gosh. Because <clears throat> it said under also, the oak. Yeah. That one is under um, a different location. Yeah, it is in a different location. Yeah. Um, it also is interesting that when... Israel started to have its monarchs and kings. At the controversy, it says, here was over Bethel and um, the associations with its sacred history and monuments led the people to transform it into a center of idolis, idol, idolatry, idolatrous yeah. worship. So, yeah. Well, they purified themselves before going to Bethel where the Lord had promised to be with Jacob wherever he went mm -hmm. god protected them as they journeyed and the cities around them were in great terror so they didn't come after jacob's fa family god kept his promise and he still does mm -hmm. when they came to bethel he built an altar and jacob called the place el bethel the god of the house of god of god yeah where he first re god first revealed himself and jacob did recognize the faithfulness that god had done in his life mm -hmm. he was always faithful so the but question i get, think pardon me didn't, i was gonna say he was faithful but he didn't get rid of those gods i'll look it up uh, <laughs> i just i just say i don't know <laughs> i've already put my commentaries away for genesis y'all <laughs> so i can't I just reach out. It up. yeah i just looked it up and i said that um these were not anything valuable. They were probably made out of stone or um, wood. And they were probably like earrings. So he probably destroyed the earrings or whatever they were. Um, and since they weren't valuable, um, he put them under, oh, let's see. Um, idols, which he had broke to pieces, perhaps he dug a hole under an oak and there he buried them that they might um be no more made use of idolatrous way and he chose to put them under an oak because it was a tree which often stands many years before it was cut down and perhaps for was used for religious purposes um these idols seem not to be made of anything valuable perhaps wood or stone for they had for had they been gold or silver jacob would have doubtless melted them and converted them to other uses and not have buried them underground and then they said, the Jews say the idol Jacob hid under the oak was in the form of a dove, um, which the Samaritans have sometime found and sat on top of Mount Zarium. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if it's stone, you can't destroy it. You, but if you broke them apart, that would be destroying them as much mm -hmm. as you could. And wood is going to deteriorate. Yeah. And faster underground. So the real question is, do you recognize God's faithfulness in your life? Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Oh, yes. Unfortunately, it's for me, it's not always at the time, but later when I look back. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth, Ray? I know that one. It's like, oh, that's why I had to go through that 50 times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we get to verses 9 through 15, God appears to Jacob again. Mm -hmm. This is in chapter 35. And he blessed him. Mm -hmm. And that Jacob, his name was Israel again. Yes. How does this compare with God's promises in Genesis 28? Well, they're Where, being killed. 
Pardon me, Anita? Um, he, his promises are being fulfilled. Yes, yeah, he made, yeah. What God had promised to Abraham and Isaac, he also promised to Jacob. Mm -hmm. That nations and kings would come from him. The mm -hmm. promise of the land and that he would have many descendants. Yes. Then Jacob worshiped the Lord with the pillar and the offering. Mm -hmm. So the main events of 16 through 29, by the way, this is a picture of Rachel's tomb. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think it was destroyed recently, wasn't it? Oh. Um, some Islam people came in. Oh, I think strange. it's that one. Was it that one or was it? Leah's tomb. I can't remember. One of the two. I'm thinking of this this one because people, Israelites got really upset about it. But one of the main events in 16 through 29. Benjamin's born and Rachel dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She calls him the, the child of sorrow, which is changed to the right child of the right my right hand. But so I was wondering, was it sorrow because she was dying, or was she? sorry about other things that she maybe the well she was yeah. in great pain and it but you know I, I think it was a it the was pain like all of her, agony. I thought it was I thought it was all of her bad choices had culminated to this like I mean that was just kind of the way I I thought maybe she realized all of her separation from um her son know. family and you know I just I thought maybe I mean, maybe, you know, like her life flashed before her eyes before she passed in the pain. I don't know. Because as yeah, a mother, I mean, it's interesting that she have all of that, you know, as a mother, you would have all of that. My decisions led to this. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I wasn't there. Maybe, yeah, maybe no, you repent, <laughs> repent of some of your sins at that point, you know? Right? Like, it makes me wonder, like, wow, would you just be like, I don't know, like, as a mom, just to be like guilt ridden, because she hadn't been guilt ridden ever up until that point. The other important event is that Jacob was able to see his dad. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. meantime, Reuben screwed up and slept with one of Bill. Jacob's <laughs> Billa. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that story's thrown in there. <laughs> kind of yeah. weird isn't it it um, reminds me of ecclesiastes with the, all the vanity and yeah it does doesn't it oh it might have been thrown in because he was the oldest child yeah he lost his birthright that way because it was given to joseph and that was one of the reasons that reuben lost it is because he slept with Bilha, and it mm -hmm. and it's it's stated that way when the mm -hmm. when the blessings go out he remembers and says uh-uh you're not getting it I'm giving it to Joseph, who's the firstborn of Rachel, because Reuben messed up. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think it's also because God has said over and over, one of the things he detests the most is sexual sin. It's one yeah. of the few things he says that we sin against ourselves. Yes, that's why he hates it, because it hurts us. Yeah. So we, well, again, we make choices and they have consequences. Mm -hmm. But wasn't it a sin that um, Israel had multiple wives, concubines, and all of that was not the original plan that God set out for man and woman. And so and because of that sin, it just, it multiplied unto the children. And had God told them that it was wrong? No. I mean, I know he did in Exodus. Yeah, but, but he did, he hadn't at this point. No, no, I didn't think so. No. Well, maybe yeah. they needed the descendants at that point. I guess. They really did. And how, you know, have one woman having 12 kids, man, that's <laughs> a lot out of a woman, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Especially Remember. the barren one. Except they well, had more. You're not counting the female. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but you know what? My, mater my paternal grandmother had, my dad was one of 13 and it wasn't that unusual. Mm -hmm. I couldn't wow. do it. I couldn't do it. 
<laughs> but that's a good point, Denise. I, I, I agree. Yeah, with that. It, it, and you know, and also the mortality weight. You I know, heard... that's too because my uh, my great grandmother. I, I thought of it with this with all these descendants. If she had written before she passed away in Italian. I don't want to make it long. Um, how when they were coming from Italy on the boat, like one of the kids died and it was just like no big deal. Like basically yeah. kids died and she had like seven, but I'm just saying kids, I mean, then that's just even as far as one generation above me, you know, I mean, not really one, but I mean, this is 2000 years ago. They probably did have lots just because of the ratio yeah, because most of them died. You know, uh, you know people say, well, you know, people didn't live as long. Well, I, I, Isaac was 180, y'all. Okay. Come on. All right. It's not that. It's that so many died under three. They died. Mm -hmm. And that, and then well, you go an average amount, and that's when the numbers get really, really low. But you think about it. Ishmael had 12. They all mm -hmm. lived, you know. Uh, Jacob that, had well, 12 that we know of lived. I mean, seriously. I mean, we yeah. don't know. Because realistically, there, there have been several that passed away. Yeah. Okay. It evidently wasn't important because God didn't have that recorded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, he didn't. He didn't say, well, so and so lost 15 kids, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more. I think that's kind of, you know, I've been talking to friends about this you know why people um are so freaked out about kids getting sick they aren't used to sickness are they no. when i was a child i had every kind of measles there was mm -hmm. i had the mumps i had chicken mm -hmm. pox i had scarlet fever i had mm -hmm. this disease i had that disease mm -hmm. it was yeah. nothing to be sick right. and, but people now are vaccinated against all that stuff right they don't know what illness is and i think that's where yeah. a lot of this fear is coming from because i'm sitting here going they're running a fever so you do this you know da, 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 you know because we're used to sickness you know my my firstborn had chronic strep for throat for the first two years of his life chronically yeah. chronically right. you know yeah. and i couldn't even work because i had to be home at least three days out of five because i wow. couldn't keep a job because he was sick all the time and with mm. strep throat, he, you know, the doctor says, okay, um, he's had this kind of strep now. He could die next time he gets it. And I go, what do you mean next time? You know, mm. what do you mean he could die? Mm. You know, I had no idea. I was that ignorant, okay? And I got really educated real quick, you know. So he did get his tonsils removed, and that did mm. relieve the problem. But I'm used to sickness. The kids these our children and our grand are not used to sickness yeah that's true well this whole generation is so bubbled and sheltered yeah that they really don't go outside and play in the dirt because they just want to sit in front of technology <laughs> i remember my yeah. mom get out of this house and don't come back until sunday <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. i don't care where you go just get out of this house you know? i went to yesterday for COVID and that's one of the women that was there um she talked about how they were raised by the streets because their parents were all immigrants in California and they had to work and so they were all raised basically together in church because the church would watch them on Sundays wow. and when and mm -hmm. they would basically play in the street the rest of the week together <laughs> they all stayed out mm -hmm. yeah. yeah all right so we'll go to 36. I'm just going to go through this real quick because we are out of time. But we're going to the generations of Esau or Edom, the father of the Edomites. Now mm -hmm. keep that in mind as mm -hmm. we go into Joshua and um, Judges next year. Mm -hmm. By the way, Esau had three wives and five sons born to him in Canaan. The names are a little bit different. And that's why if you had problems putting it there, which, you know, some of you emailed me and I go, yeah, I know it's a problem. Um, um, they either had names like Esau, Edom, or Jacob, Israel, or one of the two wives that died and he married others. We don't really know. But he lived in the kill country of Seir. And verses 20 through 30 tell us about the Horites who descended from Seir and lived in that land. Verse 25 connects that person, Esau's <laughs> wife. Well, holy and, mama. Yeah, that, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> 
she was the daughter of Ant and, and the chief of the Horites. Um, and then the first bunch. And then the other names are repeated throughout the Old Testament are Teman, Al Am Amalek, and the place of Bazaar. Whatever. Okay. Possible things. I just had the generations of Esau. Yeah. That's good. I just had Esau, father of Edomites. There you go. We had uh, the cross references about Alamac um, on day four, um, Exodus, God's prophecy that he would utterly block out the memory of Amalek. Mm. Yeah. All right. And this, this goes back to the God made with the promise God made with Abraham that he would bless those who bless him and curse those who curse him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they cursed him. So he cursed him back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, the kingdom of Eden would not let Israel pass through the land on their way to Canaan. Mm -hmm. That was in numbers. This account seems to be the end at the end of the 40 years after Israel left Egypt. Joshua, God gave Mount Seir to Esau. He established borders for both Israel and Edom. I think that's interesting. And Esau married one of Ishmael's daughters, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I got a question. The people, the Arabs that live um, near Israel, on the other side of Israel and, and all around, are they the children of, of Esau or are they the children of Ishmael? Both. Um, Edom is south where Ishmael is east and north is that not correct i wish i could Kay asked me about a book and i can't... oh you know what i just found it <laughs> it's this one can you see that mm -hmm. yeah okay. and it's got it's got overlays so oh, i got that at home yeah it's a it's cool iran is east Tehran is east north. Turkey is north. Saudi Arabia is south. That's the Edomites. Okay. This is a real good book, though. And it's got what is overlays. The name of it? Um, then and Now Bible Maps. It's by Rose Publishing. One it has, so if you can see this, um, it has mm -hmm. these, well, it has these overlays. So you can see what it was and what it is now. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really pretty cool. And then, you know, it's got different ones. So. Thank you, because that is helpful. Yeah, you were asking for overlays, and I couldn't find this. Yes. It was, it was well, right here. Hide, one page is one map, and the other page, it's not even like I can actually, like, oh. try to just pull them apart and lay them over. But, yeah. Well, it's you trick copies. Well, I, I, I was thinking about that, but I didn't have, I didn't have technology with me and i even had a technology glitch this morning of course what is yeah, that cause... called the bible maps mm -hmm. then and now then and now bible author. Maps. who's the author it's rose publishing thank oh, you rose publishing thank you mm -hmm. rose publishing has a lot of cool stuff yeah, I've got if the... you if you've got a oh what's that what's the bible star in town tracy you know we went that one day Christian uh, publishing. Christian yeah, Christian book. Yeah. If you have a, or you can get, go on christianbook.com. They have all of Rose's stuff. I got lots and lots of stuff. You know, I got oodles. Donna Coates got me that map over there. Well, it's not a map. It's a time history thing. You can't see it, can you? Okay. <laughs> see that? Can you oh. see that on my oh. You can also yeah. get the Amazon. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I get all sorts of neat gifts from y'all. It's cool. <laughs> it's like, but I have no more room on my walls, y'all. My walls are just plastered with stuff. So what have you learned in the study about the Lord, his promises, Jacob? And just let's just name a few things that you might have really that might have really made a difference in your life. Have you thought he about it? Promises. He keeps his promises. I think that's I mean. a biggie. Yeah, just to hold on on him. 
And God's plan cannot be thwarted by the anger of man or man's actions. Yep. Good one. Um, I like that. No matter what his plan is, it may not go the way you think it should, <laughs> but you have to trust his plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even trust when him. there's some, even when you're blessed, there's ups and downs and it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. He still answers them. Another one that I think we talked about was that God's purpose brings God's protection. I felt I found that very comforting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure glad he protected me all those years. Right. Me too. And still protecting. Oh yeah. <laughs> Even from my own self. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Also comforting that God uses messed up people. I think that's a big lesson from this yeah. study. <laughs> Those people were messed up, but he still used them. Amen. Even in the messiest of family dynamics yes. and family situations, God definitely. Yeah. And if families have been dysfunctional forever. It's not just Correct. nine years or whatever. That's kind of a comfort too. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the best of us are messed up, right? That's right. That's right. Exactly. But you know, we don't know how our grandmothers and grandfathers and great grandmothers and grandfathers, how they prayed for us as they prayed for their, their children. And so our blessings very much could be coming from the prayers of our grandparents. People and before the people I... pray, yeah, who prayed for us. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. I like that. As like, you know, we with grandchildren should be praying for the future generations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. I saw my great nephew um, at a band concert. And he was like rolling up and down the hill. And I thought of um, the Jacob's ladder because it just looked like it reminded me of angels rolling up and going up and down. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We will start Sermon on the Mount in two weeks on September 17th. It is going to be good. I can just tell. Um, we, will, we will start with lesson one on the 17th. We won't have an introduction, as I said before. But you did a good job. Most of are here made it all four weeks, or at least most of them. So this was a lot of reading and a lot of things to process, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, and you find all these stories. <laughs> Pardon me? I said it was a lot of drama. This <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean a it's a lot drama. that got us to, you know, ultimately Jesus's lineage, but it's a lot. Denise, yeah. thank you so much. I so appreciate being in your classes. Oh, well, thank you. I, I'm thank so you. glad to have you guys. Me too. And um if you're in um, Sermon on the Mount, you should already be getting emails from me. Uh, just I some did. little pre, pre, precursors of things to come. I am excited. Yeah, I, I'm real excited. I'm, and you know, like I said, I've, uh, I'll be studying this w with you, so it'll be new to me too. So I'm real excited about that. That's good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah it'll be new to me so like i said before though for, for those who just come in um or you know weren't here earlier um the first lesson is an overview so don't try to go too in depth don't be doing keywords and you know unless it tells you to there's a few keywords that it has you look up but don't don't go real, real, real in depth in it, or you'll drive yourself nuts and you'll think, I can't do all this. Well, it's because you're doing too much. We will tear it apart as we go through the weeks. It is a 10 week lesson. So you know that we're going to go through those three chapters pretty in depth. Okay. Okay. So just want to, you know, 